I would like to call to order a public meeting of the Batavia Board of Education uh, Tuesday, March 20th, 2018, at 7 o'clock p.m. Kathy's filling out a pink sheet, but as soon as she's done there, she will call the roll. Asha? I do have. All right, sure. go for it. Okay. Uh, Big Bar? I am here. Blakely? Dryden? Here. Gaspar? Here. Schmock? Here. Moe? Present. And Ramal? Here. Ms. Block is going to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance tonight. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and for those in the audience, we have Dr. Hitchens' uh, first ever meeting, probably last ever meeting that she will miss. Um, so Mr. Pierce will be sta uh, standing in her stead tonight for anything that we need from administration. And we also have Mrs. Uh, Blakely tonight who is out. Uh, there's a little medical issue that she's dealing with with her family. So any thoughts and well wishes that you can send her way would probably be appreciated. All right, and um, Mr. Pierce, any items to be added or removed from the agenda tonight? No. Thanks, Kathy. All right, then, tonight's celebration is the Batavia High School Wind Symphony. The Wind Symphony was selected to play at the 2018 Illinois Music Education Conference. Batavia was one of five high school bands in Illinois to perform this year. The IMEC regularly attracts 10,000 music educators from Illinois and surrounding states. Additionally, BHS Junior Nathan Knauf performed at IMEC with both the Wind Symphony and in the choir. He was named an All-State Choir member, so congratulations to the BHS Wind Symphony and to Nathan for those honors. So I'd like to call up Mr. Chris Owen and Mr. Brian Van Clay, the BHS Band Directors, along with some of their students, to share their experiences at the IMEC. Uh, thank you. Thanks for having us today and for honoring uh, the students of our band program uh, at our performance. Like, like Kathy said, um, on January 26th, we were uh, invited to perform at the IMEA, uh, it used to be called IMEA, now it's called the IMEAC uh, convention in Peoria. It's the largest convention in Peoria, and like I said, 10,000 or so music educators come there to hear us. As you might imagine, um, performing it just in our BFAC for parents and friends is already nerve wracking, but to listen for, to play for hundreds or thousands of other band directors is a, is a daunting task. And so we had lots of students and help us prepare, obviously, and then lots of directors to do that too. My colleague, Mr. Van Clay, is gonna give you one of our programs that we gave to everyone. It's really, really well designed by Peterson Design here in Batavia. Um, and then Andrew Hunter and Joy Mazur are here to talk a little bit about what it was like to perform in that. So I'd like to welcome them up to do most of the talking because they got the chance to do it. It's pretty quite an honor. So, yeah, you love our music teachers. Don't we love our students. <laughs> um, hi everyone. My name is Joy Mazur. I'm a current junior in Wind Symphony at Batavia High School, uh, and I've been in the music program ever since freshman year when I joined marching band. And I think it's pretty safe to say that it's changed my life. I've met a lot of new people and uh, they've quickly become my best friends and probably lifelong friends. Um, I really love the music program just because I think there's something so encouraging and powerful about creating a show or a program with people that you love and feel really connected to. And I'm really honored and excited to be a part of the music program right now because we're getting to take a lot of new steps that we've never taken before and that alumni have only dreamed of taking, um, such as you know the iMac performance. And uh, I really loved going to the iMac performance, not only because I got to go on a road trip with my whole band uh, and eat some <laughs> really good Italian food, but um, because we had a goal and we were able to go and accomplish that goal. And I think for many of us, it was the best performance of our high school music careers. Uh, we worked for a long time on the music, um, not only you know rehearsing it, but performing it for other people, analyzing it, uh, going into the history, as well as relating it to our own lives and ourselves. And about an hour before we performed in Peoria, we uh, just had some time to get together and 
just talk and you know people could voluntarily raise their hands and just talk about the music and what the music meant to them and what the group meant to them. And uh, a lot of people said something. I think a majority of the band probably had something to say. And uh, there were a lot of tears shed and it was a really touching moment. And I think what I took away from that was that uh, through our music we've become a family. And it's not just something for entertainment and it's not just something that we play or that we listen to, but it's something that really connects us to each other. And uh, I really love music but I think I love the people that I found through music a little bit more. Uh, hello, <clears throat> my name is Andrew Hunter. Uh, I'm a senior and I'm the principal trumpet player in the Latavia High School's Wind Symphony. Uh, for me, band class has always been an escape from stress. It's always been a safe place where I'm surrounded by caring people and passionate people who love making music just as much as I do. Um, my closest friends are band kids and they are the most talented, enthusiastic, and loving people I know. Um, my band teachers have always made band class the kind of environment that creates those people, uh, one where peers are lifted up rather than put down, and where students are encouraged to be good people first and get good musicians second. My band directors have consistently been role models for me. They always find the best in people and bring it out. They work tirelessly, tirelessly to make things great, and they will always set aside time for, to work with you if you need help. And most importantly, they're friends. I've laughed with them, I've cried with them, and I've grown up with them over the past four years. Uh, I will never, ex never forget the experience I had playing with the Wind Symphony at the Illinois Music Education Conference. It was more than just playing to a room full of band teachers. It was a showcase of how far the band had come and how much we had grown as a group of people. Uh, it is well known in the music community that every band director has had a moment where they knew that teaching music was their calling. And as I left the stage at IMEC, I had that moment. <clears throat> Playing on that stage made me realize that I want to continue making music for the rest of my life, and I can't think of a better way to do, that, to do so than by following in the steps of Mr. Owen and Mr. Van Clay and becoming a band director. Uh, I am so proud of, to be in the band program, and I'm so thankful for all the support and praise we have been given. Uh, on the behalf of all the students from the Batavia Wednesday thank you. Thank you so much. You're quite eloquent, thank you. I know, awesome speakers. Thank you I'm sorry that we couldn't have sent you somewhere more exotic, like. Oxford. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely in January. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, well, thanks so much for coming. Thank you, guys. Congratulations. All right, the first item under our agenda for public comments are board member committee updates. Start with I do have something to share. I am the liaison to the STEM school, and on Wednesday, April 4th, is the open house for interested parents who have students. They'll be going into third grade, right? And there is an open house from 6 to 8 p.m. at the University Banquet Hall at Aurora University that you can attend. They'll have information about the school itself. Yeah. I believe there's a tour. Um, they'll talk about the STEM school, answer your questions. It's very informative as a past parent of a student who attended there. It's a great way to get information, see the school, get your questions answered. Um, there's no commitment. It's just a great way to find out about the school. I know Brad will be there. I'm planning on being there. So if you have a third grade, you, Incoming third grader, right, from Batavia. So there's more information on the website, bps101.net. Look there. Thanks, Sue. Chris, do you have anything? I have not had any committee meetings. So. Well, I've had a couple. We had facilities, which is probably the most active. We are still very deeply in a learning phase. So we had a number of guest speakers. We met at the middle school. Um, Brian's Webkin principal gave us a great tour of the building. The members got a chance to find out more about a variety of our schools. Um, Brad was there, gave us an update on sort of the direction that we're moving into and what learning spaces might look like. And we anticipate continuing that learning cycle before we start delving into um, making any decisions or recommendations. So it was a really good meeting that um, week. And we also had CAC, which was sort of a routine ongoing check-in with ELA and math, and I'm always excited to see what uh, the curriculum committees are doing in our district. But nothing new, terribly new and exciting to report in that one. 
just want everyone to know I super busy though. I was actually uh, taken away from my committee meeting by something far more exciting. No. Um, <laughs> so I'm going to defer to Tony. There's notes in here, but it sounds like something that you would speak to better than I would. Yeah, at the RAC meeting, we are looking at um, ways to uh, create allocation formulas that might help us better decide how to uh, um, make sure our resources are allocated in an equitable fashion. We're considering that. It's not thing that we're, we're looking at doing that maybe this spring and over the course of the next year. But that's the conversation we had last week, two weeks ago. Uh, I was in the Caribbean last month, um, goofing off, um, and there was a great work done by the stipend committee, and I'm just going to let Steve make a comment or two about it. Yeah, we've, uh, we've done a lot of work. Uh, I'm actually really excited about the progress. I think that um, stipend schedules is kind of something that every school district struggles with, and um, we're looking at... We've uh, we developed some core values a while back, and uh, we made some significant strides. I'm going to remain very vague, though, because we're still working on things. Um, but the product is starting to come together. Um, we're trying to, for instance, at the elementary level, um, we're trying to provide opportunities at all of our schools um, with some similar options for students, as opposed to this school gets that, and this school gets that, and this school gets that. So. One of our, our, our big um, drivers was to have equity. So uh, I'm really, really excited about the work we have. Uh, we're, we're, in, we're more on the uh, completed stage with some of our elementary work, and then we're in the midst of tackling uh, middle school and high school. So um, there will be a very good product with a quality rationale uh, for why we're doing things at the end of this, and we're getting closer. The only thing I have is the 2018 Hall of Honor has been announced and now we're just getting ready to get it off in line and in place for September. So that's it. And I do apologize. At CAC, I felt so much because I was trying to wear too many hats at once. We actually had an amazing report from the Student Services Committee, which um, because uh, social emotional learning and social and emotional health is so important in our district, um, that's why I feel like it's an egregious error that I did not mention it because it's amazing what we're doing and what we continue to do and what we continue seeking to do to support our students and um, I think, didn't I see Matt Jeffries here somewhere? Mm -hmm. There he is. He was the one who reported to us and, um, and the work that that group is doing is just amazing and I think they're reporting to us sometime, Brad, when, is, when are they going to report to us? In April. Next yes. Month. Oh. So actually, uh, we're, I'm really excited at what they're going to bring to us. So, um, sorry, Matt. I did appreciate what you said, and I did not want to overlook that. Uh, if there's no other committee meetings, we will go on to public comments. Um, so tonight we have two people um, who want to make public comments. Was there anybody else that wanted to address the board? It looks like everyone else is almost everyone else's employees. So I have all the information. We ask that if you're going to address the board, that you come up to the front table so that we can all hear you and the microphone can pick up your voice. So the first person I would like to call is Duke Wall. Good evening, Good evening. on the board members. Um, I would like to address uh, board member Chris Lowe uh, moreover uh, this evening. I'd like to thank you very much for withdrawing your idea for a, uh, a town hall meeting dealing with school violence and other related issues. Uh, the last three uh, town hall meetings that I've been to have resulted in chaos. Uh, they didn't go well at all. The last one was in November in, uh, in Bensonville. And uh, it, uh, it seems to me that people don't have enough respect for each other anymore. They don't they don't keep still, they don't listen, they want to scream and holler and carry on. And I really think that would have brought a big embarrassment to you and the city of Batavia and everybody else. And uh, it's probably a better idea to discuss it in a smaller committee and to be able to present a, a coherent idea rather than have uh, um, screaming and hollering going on and absolutely nothing happen at the end of the evening, which is what happened in Bensonville. Um, 
I'm really, um, I guess what I want to say here is uh, a town hall meeting might have worked, you know, 50 years ago when people were not informed as they are today with mass media and social media and every other media you can think of. All the players that show up these days are well informed. They know what they're going to talk about. And it just becomes nothing but a cat fight across the room. Um, 50 years ago, they might have come to uh, a town hall meeting to find out what the issues were. They may have been out working the farm fields or doing something else and didn't know what everybody else's opinion was. And so it might work back then, but they don't certainly work now. So thank you very much for withdrawing that and uh, saving everybody a little uh, uh, grief and agony. Do you have any questions for me, by the way? Anybody? Thank you very much for your time. I certainly appreciate it. Have a good evening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, the next person I'd like to call is Dana Gilliam. Hello, I'm a senior at Batavia High School, and I'm Daniel Gillen. Uh, so I had the school. We had a walkout, and then we had a follow-up walkout, and then uh, the administration sent an email to all the students with the uh, names of all of our representatives, and then uh, they put that up on the big uh, projector they had in the cafeteria. So I had a grievance with that, although I do really support uh, ending school violence. Um, so I shared that with the principal, and then she told me that she would like me to come into the school board meeting to share it with you. So the issue I have is that um, although it doesn't relate to gun control or anything like that, it, relate, it has a strong connection to it, and I don't think the school should be addressing that. The issue that pertains to the schools is they need to keep children safe and allowing them to walk out is a safety issue and although you want to have kids voice their opinions this is something that's never been done before allowing them to just leave school and although it would be on school grounds and property and the, the teachers would be watching them it isn't something that should be allowed in the manner that uh, the parents didn't give them permission to do anything like this on a regular school day I would not be able to leave the school um, for any manner whatsoever. Um, I would have to get teacher permission and be escorted and stuff like that uh, if I were to even just look at the football field or something like that. Um, or if you were to go on a field trip, you need your parents to sign a uh, permission slip form. And these aren't anything that happened at the school. If uh, kids want to, and which they should, uh, share their opinions about matters like this. They should do it in their own time, um, after or before school. And I, I don't know what changed to make this seeming this one issue out of hundreds of issues that are out there. Why this is the one issue that people are walking out of school with because and why the school is allowing people to uh, do this. Um, I think you would need to be, it needs the same policy across the board. You can't just have people walk out of school for any issue, um, whether or not it does relate to the schools. Um, something that I went to the youth and government uh, meeting in Springfield this uh, previous weekend, an idea that they had out there was walk-ups, where students walk uh, up to other students, and I don't know if that's quite the idea, but it would be, I would say, a better method of students expressing their opinions in a way that uh, remains the same throughout um, and would, wouldn't cause the issue that it's causing now as more and more walkouts are just being planned. I think they're being planned not because of the issue that is at hand, but because students want to walk out of class and they don't want to be learning. So those were just some of the issues I had in uh, Principal Joanne Smith wanted uh, me to share that with the board. Thank you. We don't always get to hear students' opinions, so it's nice that you came to that first Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Next, I would like to invite Amy B. Carey, the BEA president. It's really high up today. I'm really tall. Uh, I've got a couple of updates. The first one's probably the most important one. We had our election last Wednesday, 
And um, I want to announce, I'm very excited to announce that Todd Swanson, who is sitting right over there, uh, is was uh, elected as the new BDA president as of July 1st. And Melissa Foster is going to be taking his spot as secretary. So I'm congratulating Todd specifically tonight and Melissa. And um, I'm going to continue working with BEA on a different level and then continue to increase my involvement at the state and national level. So um, that'll be exciting stuff for the BEA. And a couple of other quick announcements. On May 7th, I have booked the BFAC in the evening, which was very difficult to do. And uh, we are going to be showing, yeah. We're going to be showing um, the documentary Resilience, which is the follow-up to Paper Tigers, which we showed um, all day at our institute day. But we had a huge um, like number of requests, particularly from ESPs that don't have to come to institute day. There are a lot of people that either couldn't see it that were staff or people who aren't at institute day. So um, we are working with IEA and local regions and we're going to invite uh, staff and superintendents and admin and board members in all our area districts and I wanted to personally invite you to come. We'll have a panel of experts after and it'll be really good stuff and the film itself is about an hour and then the panel's about half an hour after that. Um, and it deals with the brain science around ACEs, trauma and resiliency. Uh, tomorrow we are having, we're hosting the President Superintendent Forum and um, I know Steve is co-hosting along with me since Lisa's is out of town. Uh, and we are having Christina Argue, who's an IEA, she's the kind of resident expert on um, ACEs and trauma and she's going to be talking about how that intersects with uh, ESSA, the new um, uh, Ed Law and SB 100 with the discipline stuff. Uh, two other quick things, BEA Trivia Night was a huge success and we raised uh, over $5,700. So we have two scholarships for seniors at BHS, so tell your friends if you know people. Uh, one is for somebody who intends to go into education and one is for somebody who intends to go to career and tech ed. So um, either the trades or um, like phlebotomy school or auto mechanic school or um, you know something non-traditional to honor Floyd Carlson, our former BEA president who taught shop. And last but not least, I did want to just recognize that uh, we had a really good problem solving process with the elementary proposed schedule changes um, that originally <coughs> didn't fit within our contract. And we had elementary um, educators in every job category sit down with administrators and I, I sat in on the meeting but I don't I don't understand the elementary schedule well enough to get any good input at all so um, but they did work through the problem of providing more social emotional support and getting the social workers to be able to do their jobs all day and still have it fit within the contract day, which I thought was uh, really good. And they also worked within the whole, we're switching from a 3-4 section school to a 2-3 section school. Um, and I just wanted to say we do better when we work together and we have a voice at the table. So I appreciate it. Thank you. Good night. Thank you, Sammy. Thanks, Sammy. All right. Congratulations, Tom. All right. I think Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Our senior ambassador. Yeah, so um, first we would like to congratulate everyone that participated in Rock and Run Life. Um, if any of you saw that, it was a really awesome show. I know that everyone worked very hard in it, so congratulations to them. Um, second, uh, I also had the opportunity to travel to Springfield with the Our Potato Key Club, and they were going to the, um, or we were going to the uh, Key Club District Convention. So basically, at this convention, they recognize key clubs from the Illinois and Iowa region, and they basically give out awards. So our key club won uh, a lot of awards, but the most prominent being a first place win for raising the most money for neuroscience research, and that was through our Mr. BHS um, program, or our show. And so that's actually something that our key club exclusively does and that we are very proud of. And so that was really awesome to see our key club getting that recognition that 
we worked so hard to, re uh, to receive. And then another big thing was um, I was able to attend with like about 10 other students. We took um, one of the little buses to Willowbrook High School and attended like this big school safety convention uh, following all the events that happened in Florida. Um, so it was us and about, I don't know, there was tons of other schools there from around the area. Um, and it, so it started out with, we would all brainstorm um, and kind of like analyze our school a little bit, like our strengths and then our weaknesses and what we could do better and what we do now and all that stuff. And we were able to send um, our people to other schools and see what they were talking about and then like use that to build our discussion. So we made this big display and then we all went into their auditorium and each school gave a one minute pitch on what they had to say and like what goals they were gonna try to set and like to achieve to make change in our schools happen because everyone was a little outraged after what happened. And it was really cool because um, it was all very mature, invested students uh, who were politically involved and knew what was happening with modern day present events. And um, to hear what everybody had to say was really powerful and cool. And after that, there was senators and um, policemen and all sorts of House of Representative uh, members and all sorts of people up on the stage and they were in a panel. And we had previously written down questions to ask them and they addressed all of our questions. Well, they didn't get to all of them, but they addressed some of our questions, uh, which was really cool because we actually got answers to what we wanted to know. Um, and so it was really awesome. And then when we got back on the following Wednesday, um, all the students that went along with um, Dr. Smith and uh, a couple others, we all kind of debriefed on what we s had talked about at the conference and tried to like separate what we wanted to do and make plans. So hopefully that will all move into place in the future uh, as we continue to implement various features on our school and I know there's already been strides made after events that have happened um, and that led up to the walkout which I think was really successful for students and we had asked at the conference if that was something that we should like we should attend and they said that it was a really good way for students to have our voices heard um, so we actually advertised that as something that students could like get our voices heard um, and it was a big success we had a lot of students and I think that administration did a great job of making sure that we were all on school grounds and making sure that the whole area was secure um, so overall I think that was a big success but hopefully those changes that we want to achieve will go into place in the future. Yeah, so a lot of it, um, it was like three major things and it was like physical safety that we talked about and then like mental health and um, can't think of the last one off the top of my head, but like, um, oh, it was like um, a welcoming environment. So making everybody feel like they belong and like not so much um, like subcultures at our school because what we talked about at the conference was how, you know, we live in a nice community and it's predominantly white. And so they address the fact that like minorities, whether it be um, like the color of your skin or like LGBT community type features, they wanted to raise awareness and make everybody feel involved and connected in some sort of way. Cause they feel like, well, we all feel like that's not something that we address well enough at our school. Um, along with the physical safety, just better awareness of um, who's coming in and who's going out, and then various drills like practicing and addressing what students are supposed to do if anything were to happen in something like a passing period or if you were in the library or the lunchroom, because believe it or not, we don't have any procedures for that. So addressing more issues along that and then the whole mental health thing. We talked about making counseling, um, moving it more virtual because there's this big stigma with counselors um, where people, where kids feel like 
you only see a counselor if there's something wrong with you or if you have an issue and no kid wants to admit that they have an issue. So moving more towards like a virtual, really easy uh, communication with students and their counselors uh, to kind of get rid of that stigma so kids are more willing to reach out to their counselors when they need it. It sounds like you guys are taking a more multifaceted approach more than just walking out. There's a lot of other things that you guys are thinking about and doing beyond that um, to make sure that our schools are as safe as possible. So I appreciate that. Yeah. Always saying action. Any other questions? Yeah. Social studies teacher talking. A walkout is an act of civil disobedience, is it not? Wasn't that the intent? Yeah. But in your case, um, the administration um, chose not to sanction, but um, so it really wasn't disobedience so much. It was a more of an event. I guess. Which brings us to one of your fellows who had a complaint or two about it. Um, what is your feeling? Um, your, your fellow students seem to suggest that students are not really political actors. They were just out on a kind of a skylark skipping class. Is that your sense? Mine? Yeah. No. Is that your sense of it? Mm. I could see that. But at the same time, there was a lot of people who cared and had something to say and wanted to get their voices heard. And so they were the ones pushing everything that was happening. So what it actually looked like was we were all outside and there was people um, talking and giving us information about what was happening. So even if that was the case, those kids that were just looking to get out of class, they were all standing and they were all listening. And so hopefully in the future, they'll be more informed on what's happening because we did have those leaders uh, who attended the conference with me who were, you know, giving the lay down of what's been happening and what we need to change as a school. So from your point of view, no matter what someone's motivation or intent was, it was still a very, very good experience. Yeah. yeah, I think overall, whether you knew what was happening before or you were looking to get out of class, everybody learned something walking back in. Okay, so here's the hard question. We're the school administration not to sanction this activity, if it were an actual walkout in which it was actually civil disobedience, in which there was actually punishment involved, would you still participate? I don't know what the punishment would be. Let's assume Chris. it's something short of bread and water for 30 days. <laughs> <laughs> But here's a question too, John, if we're going to go down this. I'm just curious from your perspective, Chris, since you were such a leader, did you necessarily view this as like, I want civil disobedience? Or did you, I, I mean, I can kind of keep feeling like you wanted to have a moment of community is what it sounds like to me. So I'm just wondering if like, I think people our age kind of view it as a more radical civil disobedience. I'm wondering what was your perspective of what was the purpose? Um. I mean, for me personally, after attending the conference, I felt like there definitely was change that needed to be had. And obviously nothing's gonna happen if we just go about our day sitting in classrooms, learning the same thing over and over again. Um, so it was kind of an outlet for students who did feel like there needs to be change to go and say, we want this to happen. I don't mean to put you on the spot, but no, it's my, fine. Reading of, my reading of um, of our progress as a nation, where civil disobedience happens, Rosa Parks, Martin Luther King Jr., etc. You know, they spend a lot of time in jail, in trouble for that voice. And I think, I guess, what I'm trying to point out is that to separate those who may think this is a lark in a, in a moment out of class from those who are really dedicated to an issue. You know, civil disobedience um, comes with a cost and that those who've been most successful are willing to pay that cost. 
Do you, you follow what I'm saying? Yeah. I don't mean to lecture you, I'm just No, saying. yeah. And at the conference we actually talked about that because there were some schools there where like their board or their administration was not was gonna punish them yeah. if they were to walk out. And so I mean they were it's a fine line to walk as a student, you know, you want your voice to be heard but at the same time you're told to follow the rules. So, I mean, they were torn on what to do, and they were asking those members on the panel, what do you think we should do? Um, and for us, it was kind of like, we're lucky that we get to hear, or have our voices heard, and not have to face the punishment. So I get what you're saying, but at the same time, it, we looked at it, for us, as a privilege that we got to participate in. Thank you. Can I ask a question? Yeah. At this conference that you went to, when you asked about going out, and they asked their you asked their opinion, um, and they encouraged you, I guess, to go out. Yeah, they was said they supported it and said that it was a good way it. to. Was it ever mentioned, or did it ever occur to you or any of your friends or anyone else that all the students would be out at one place, at one location, at one time, known to everyone? that it might be dangerous, that if someone was looking right. to do something. That also happens every day when we send kids out for gym. And two kids right. Kids out. It happens at 7.25 and 2.30, yeah. 2.30. But it just yeah. seems like it's, um, I feel okay. kind of like we're playing for some spot. I right. really appreciate it. You know I just wanted to thank you. But you're killing me. I'm killing you. I'm killing you. I'm killing you. From these experts. <laughs> and that was never given. I feel like, um, at the same time, I, I understand what you're saying. Um, kind of like what you guys said at 7.35 and 2.30, um, our schedule is online, our student schedule. So if someone really wanted to do something, they know when there's a third of our entire school sitting in the lunchroom with nowhere to hide or run. Um, so we face that issue every single day. We don't have procedure for what to do. So just because we're outside, I don't think it makes that big of a difference. Well, you had a chance to think on your feet. Good job. Thank you. You did amazing. <laughs> Justin's like, I'm so glad I was not. <laughs> oh, no, Justin's next, right? Yeah. <laughs> like, You're a senior in that conference. Who's a senior next year? Should he get Keep up, keep up next year and whoever comes yeah. up gets that. All right, thank you so much, gentlemen. I appreciate you are, uh, your efforts and your honesty. Uh, the next item on our agenda is our consent agenda, which is an opportunity for us to take a, one vote on a number of routine business items. Um, each item is detailed in the agenda and is in the board packet. And so, uh, Mr. Pierce will take us please through the consent agenda. Absolutely. 5.1 and 5.2 is the approval of the February 20th uh, regular and closed session meeting minutes. 5.3 is our monthly uh, personnel report. 5.4. Uh, monthly payroll and bills, 5.5, .5, the annual Fox Valley Career Center Joint Agreement. Then 5.6 and 5.7 are both internet service contracts. Uh, one is a renewal with CenturyLink, and the other is with Sendeo Networks Incorporated. And of course, 5.8 is the approval of our short consent agenda. Are there any items on the agenda for further clarification for any board members? Just a historical question on the internet service contracts, because I'm a nerd. Um, are those going down annually or up or staying stable? I didn't. Uh, this time they went down. Okay. Um, we spent for the last two, three year contracts a total of 68,000 approximately. Now it's going to be 44. Yeah, because my research has been showing that data is really, should be free at this point and stuff. Sweet. Right. If there are no other questions, I would entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda as presented. So moved. Second. Is that you, John Gaspar? Yes. Moved by Gaspar, second by Locke. Kippy, could you please call? <coughs> 85. Yes. John. Yes. Jeff. Yes. Dry. Yes. Jeff. Yes. 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 All right. Consent agenda approved. Next item on our agenda is reports. Stephen, taking us through those two. Sure, we have our FOIA requests. 
Um, we had three of them. You can uh, read who requested and the summary, and I believe uh, Superintendent Hitchens has said this a number of times. I think we often wonder why people are asking for what, and we don't really get to answer that question or ask that question. We are required um, as a part of our FOIA request training to provide the appropriate documents if we have them. Just routine stuff and reports tonight. Any questions from board yep. members? Can you remind me what the FOIA request by Matthew Norville and Sarah Freishart was? Were? Oh, that was the meeting that you were absent, I think. We don't see the copy of the FOIAs. We just get notes no, that, they, that they do want, that they request. We don't see a copy of the FOIAs, but we often, when, when these reports are given, we have an idea of what that FOIA is about. And I don't know. Actually, about two staff members. The initial okay. FOIA request is about two staff. Okay. All right. I, I believe I that was that. Right. Some staff yeah. documents and records. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, I apologize, Shannon. I didn't understand your question. That's okay. I understand. Any other questions? <laughs> All right. Then we'll move on to the action items on our agenda tonight. I'm not sure who is going to lead those. Um, I'm assuming Tony will be talking about tax warrants. Uh, actually, I'll invite Lindsay up to talk about tax anticipation loss. The gist of it is essentially that it's about this time of year that we run out of money uh, until we <laughs> receive property taxes in mid-May, and we need to borrow some money so that we can make it. Lindsay, is there anything else? <laughs> so we're um, asking for um, the authorization to borrow tax anticipation warrants up to five million dollars. Um, we haven't determined what amount that would be just yet, but we anticipate that would be the maximum we would borrow. And then we would repay it um, when we get our June property taxes back, as we historically have done. Um, and I appreciate the historic data because. When I saw that, the first thing I was going to do was call and ask you, how much did we do the year before? But we approved five last right spring, though. We ask you to pro approve five about yes. every year, and so it depends on where we are in the year and how when bills come due and how much we think we need. So we are asking for your authorization to issue up to five million. That doesn't mean that we will issue five. Correct. And we will not know the rent on this yeah. until we offer it. We will not know. Right. Yes, because they're bid. And so when we right. issue this, this, this debt, that um, up. we don't know what the bid's going to be. Obviously, we'll take the lowest one because money's money. But um, yeah, we don't know how much. But it's money. Right. It's, it's not as though we have an option. Right. right, right. Do we feel better than we did last year at this time? Because last year we were deeply concerned that time. Uh, right, I mean, we had raised the amount from 3.5 to 5. I'm thinking if you ask Tony, he's still deeply concerned. Oh, Tony's, Tony's always concerned. Tony's always deeply concerned. Very disappointed that we actually have to do this every year. <laughs> <laughs> that concerns him. Yeah, yeah. 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 That's we can ask every year. Sure, after that, it's just a degree. But I feel like last spring, you felt like we were going to use like almost every bit of that 5. Initially, I think what Chris is referring to is we thought we were going to need 3.5. And, a half. Um, and uh, then we ended up needing 5. So this year, I'm not going to give you an estimate. <laughs> gotcha. It will just be no more than five. Okay. We need a motion on this? Yes. As long as there's no other questions. You need a roll call vote. So moved. Hold on. Uh, normally, I wait until you know if anybody else has got questions. Oh, and then I just I, said it. Sorry. No, I just want to make sure. I said, does anyone else have any questions? I'm going to say this right now. If we're all good. Uh, it's the same thing every year. <laughs> Motion by law. A second. Second by law. Okay, please call the roll. See what? Yes. Driver. Yes. Yes, Mark. Yes. Mark. Yeah. Low. Yes. We did drive on. Yes. We can see. Hmm. We can see. So are we going to Tony or straight to Mark? For the Mark ages? will. Yeah, Mark can handle these next two items. All right. Mark always has the really exciting fun stuff. <laughs> he likes it. We just keep getting moved down the agenda. <laughs> yeah. We do like that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the first one is the AGS and Louise White site improvements. Um, I've talked to, the, to you guys about these before through the capital projects um, committee and um, that I presented a few months ago now. Um, so you can. You know, Know, read to you, but uh, basically the gist of these is Louise White parking lot that's in the north lot over there. Um, it is in desperate need of repair beyond, you know, just 
patching potholes. Um, it needs to be a complete replacement. Um, and with that, um, it makes sense to look at another project that's very similar, um, meaning some asphalt work needs to be done. There's a safety concern at um, AGS and ECC. It's mainly ECC with the three and four year olds um, getting to school, leaving the school. It's basically a mess over in that area with buses and parent traffic and can't just open your door and tell a three-year-old to, to go to school. It doesn't really work that way. So looking to get that area a little more safe and putting a bus turnaround to the north of Alice Gustafson. Um, so really, if you can picture that site, the northwest um, part, there's a there's currently a path there right now that leads to the back that is going to be turned into a um, turnaround so that way the buses can be in that area and then parents can be in the other area and they don't um, mix together. Um, other work over there is the back playground area, um, the asphalt part, some concrete work, some safety concerns over there. Actually, when they originally did the work, uh, when the ECC was done, you know, it's almost eight years ago now, um, they didn't redo it. They just basically cut in um, sewers and sanitary and patched, and so it's dangerous. Um, obviously, safety issues, we need to fix that. Um, so those two projects are combined and went out for um, one bid. As you can see in the bid tab and the um, attachment there, there's three bids that we received. Um, and it's a recommendation to go with Abbey paving and seal coating for that bid. And to award that contract to them. May I ask you, mm -hmm. friend, just for the public's sure. awareness, um, the scope review that you do on the bids, can mm -hmm. you tell me who does that and what it is exactly? Um, basically, that is done um, with our architects and engineers. Um, the scope review is to make sure, one, they understand um, the drawings and the plans and what was presented to them so, so they didn't meet, miss anything. Um, that way, if they left something major out, they're still bonded. But you know, some companies say, well, we missed this in here and we're going to withdraw our bid. And they have the right to do that. Um, so you want to make sure that that's done. Um, you want to check references, make sure that you know, they're following through on what they say they can do. Timelines are a key, especially in schools. You have a narrow window. Um, it's <coughs> basically to get that project done. Um, you don't want construction going on if you can help it, you know, on August 20th or yeah. September 1st. So that's really what, what happens with that. Um, I'm, I'm involved more from that outside. Um, now, I'm a part of it, but it's more of, you know, we have architects and engineers to do that work. And, you know, that's a lot of what they do. I don't sit and make the drawings and do those things. Um, so that's really a scope review. Um, again, a very high level, what I just gave you there, but that's the gist of what scope reviews are. So it's the background due diligence that yep. you need to do. Okay. Exactly. Thank you. Mark, I have one that I forgot to ask earlier today. Okay. Just out of the concrete pad for the dumpster mm -hmm. because of the, the weight of the garbage trucks. That concrete pad is not just where the dumpster part is. Is it, right. it's is it depart the, from where the truck would stop? Right. Okay, that's what I was trying to figure out yeah. in my head. So basically what happens with that is, is if you just have the regular asphalt path that you can drive on, it just sinks right. in. So okay. you go to some of our schools, you can see where that has not been done. That's what I wanted to make yep. sure that what we were doing. So. Yep, that's Thank exactly you. what we're doing. Thank you. Any other questions from back on the bed? Right. Then I would ask you motion to award Abby Paving and Seal Coating a contract to complete the base bid and alternate number one for the Alice Gustafson and Louise White school site improvements in the amount of $453,970. Moved by Vayla, second by Locke. Can, can you please call the roll? Dave Park? Yes. Dryden? Yes. Gaspar? Yes. Locke? Yes. Lowe? Yes. Tunnel? Yes. And the next one is the uh, Rotola Middle School entryway renovations. Um, again, this is another one that you've heard about. Um, this one's going to go over um, two fiscal years, so you've probably heard about this a little bit more than the other. Um, but basically, the initial um, discussion about this was really just the main entryway as you walk into Rotola uh, Middle School. It's basically has failed. Um, 
it is, there's leaks, um, there's, you know, you really have to make sure the doors are secured, um, things of that nature, basically to point, again, beyond repair. This um, then grew to a larger conversation, meeting with um, the Rotolo staff um, and administration, um, specifically about some, um, mainly security, um, and, you know, as guests come to the school, um, there's really not any clear sight lines to the door. Um, there's really, until recently, um, a buzzer system was added, but um, this way, you basically have to get buzzed in, and you come, and you'll kind of have, you know, basically somebody sitting there um, to either, you know, if it could be a student, late, okay, do the, the check-in with a student, and then, they go about their go to their locker, or it could be a parent for a meeting, um, and then they're basically checked in the office, and um, they can, you know, whoever they're meeting in the office area. So different from just walking in the office right now um, at Rotolo. The other piece of this is Rotolo's um, office area. It made sense as you're kind of you know, doing this work um, to look at the office area. Lack of better terms is very cramped when you walk into that office. Um, it's really not that welcoming. I mean, you're pretty much right on top of everybody and try to sit down. The layout just does not really work. Um, so, you know, in this, we're looking to do that as well, along with um, one of the other needs that came up in this is um, Rotolo conference rooms really don't have the size. They're not large enough to fit um, for specific meetings. Um, it's very cramped in those areas. So um, with some other things that you heard about with the copy, um, the copiers coming, the workroom was just a, a natural fit for that. Our copiers are much smaller now. The workroom is bigger than the conference area. So we're just basically flip-flopping those two spaces. Um, so that way they get a larger conference area and the workroom really doesn't need to be that large anymore um, because of the copiers are probably third of the size of what they used to be. Um, so that scope kind of grew a little bit larger than um, the initial thought. Um, so the Capital Projects Committee, we've talked about this a couple different times. Um, actually, at our last meeting, which has been a couple months ago, um, we, we talked about doing that. And basically, you know, just over two years using mo um, money that was allocated from fiscal year 18 and fiscal year 19 to complete this project. And as you can see, the recommendation is, I think I'm saying this right, but Manusos General Contractors um, to complete um, uh, this project and to award them the contract. The one thing I would add to that is the, the second set of doors that open to the north once you're in the building, that's another project that needs to be done. As well. Correct. Yeah. The athletic entrance? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Oh. So I'll be about a year from now we'll I'm talking about that. So, but that's not in this That's not in this Even though part of this is coming from that's Oh, multi-year? Correct. And so basically it'll look towards okay. the next fiscal year. Okay. But that's a separate. Right. That's okay. a separate. Well, I've got a concern here. I mean, I know we did the review on it. Um, the bid that we're accepting at $376,000 is almost $125,000 less than um, a couple of the other bids, which seems really relevant to me. In some, I just, I don't know how to, uh, how do we get so far apart? Um, We've rejected one company, the lowest bid, as not reliable. Um, the other three bids that we rejected were considerably higher than the one we took, though. And I'm wondering if you have any feeling as to why, say, KM Holly Construction might have bid this at $506,000 as opposed to $376,000. Do we have some bid, why, some idea why we're that far <coughs> apart? Um. <laughs> You can speculate. Um, there's never really uh, for sure. That's why you go out to bid and to try to get the best um, the price. Why those are so off, um, you really don't discuss that with them. Um, but you really want to hone in on the one, the lowest bid. And in going with Minu Minusos, they have done a lot of work, um, both for our architect and engineer. Um, so they're familiar with their work, and the references are 
um, school type work and again this one even more than the other project I talked about um, timeline I mean see so your the main part of the school you're renovating over the summer um, that's very important with you know about 1400 kids that go to that school to all go in one entrance would be a challenge so that was a big thing in checking references and doing the scope review um, sometimes what happens is um, contractors will come in and put a bid just to have their name continually show up but they already have too much work um, that happens from time to time um, does it always happen I don't know if it always does but one of them one of these um, bidders on the bid tab list is the same contractor that's doing some other work for us the health life safety work they figured they're in the district I would have thought they would have been a much lower cost they weren't for whatever reason um, that surprised me too um, the other two again you don't really know why they give the bid they do um, I don't mean to put you in a spot. You understand why? I'm yeah, no, I, 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 it's the same thing. I mean, honestly, I like this, the last one, those three bits, they were all right there. Sometimes you get a, a wide range. Um, it just really depends on, you know, really it depends on how much other work those companies have um, and sometimes how much they really want the work. I was going to say, based on my experience, and I've done quite a bit of this, is this is not uncommon to have that disparity. It, happens relatively frequently in my experience. Yeah. And what's interesting is, is, you know, all of those, they call them project estimators, they all have about the same numbers. I mean, the suppliers are about the same where they're getting their materials from. So it's interesting to have it that far apart, but, you know, the experience I have in, in this or in other type bids, you get the same thing. They might have had a job when you were in right. or something. Yeah, and we look to do that. We look to, you know, even with the city to see other jobs that they have, you know, to try to get the information out to as many contractors as you, as you can. You know, I've, I, for the, um, the parking lot projects, I worked with the city to see, because they had bids that went out for some street work in February. So I got their contact information and sent that, our information out to them just to see. Mm -hmm. Now one of them accepted out of probably 15, but you know, at least to get as many bids as you want, to get as competitive as you can, and you know, obviously it benefits everybody. Mm -hmm. Do you always rely on White's um, reference checks, or do you ever go out on your own and see the? I'll rely on? more on um, White. Um, that's what they, you know, basically do every day. Okay. Um, but you know, it's good to see familiar ones, mm -hmm. um, and most of them you see really are familiar, and the ones that work with work with schools. Okay. Thanks, Mark. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? questions? And I would entertain a motion to award uh, Manusas General Contractors a contract to complete the Rotolo Middle School entry renovation project for the sum of $376,310. So moved. Second. Moved by Lowe. I'm sorry, I'm second. Second by Dryden. Can you please call the roll? Dave Mark. Yes. <coughs> Dryden. Yes. Gaspar. Yes. Mock? Yes. Low? Yes. Tremble? Yes. That concludes the action part of our evening. Uh, Steve, did you want to make any administration comments for? I think that our students tonight showed great poise. I was really proud of our band folks and how eloquent they spoke. It was tremendous. And then we had a little hot seat over here, and Chris handled himself like an adult. So very impressive to continue to see the great students that uh, our educators and, and board and everybody working together are, are providing for so it's fun it's Sometimes good to see awesome. thanks Steve um, everyone got a chance to see their committee updates did any board members have any other comments that they wanted to make I just wanted to say um, as always thanks to the our um, Jack staff because I have a bunch of questions and Steve took over for Lisa spot and he got used to my peppering with a bunch of questions. You said you let me off easy. And I kind of did a little <laughs> bit. <laughs> um, but uh, I, I want to thank you guys for that. Um, I went to the Music Buffs Gala, which was always, and we had the music uh, people here. And it was at the Q Center, which was a fantastic uh, setting because everything was in one place. 
so you didn't have to move around to go from one room to listen to music and go on. You could just stay and the kids, of course, did a phenomenal job. And as uh, Justin had mentioned, Rock the Runway is the first one I've missed. Um, I was out of town, but uh, I had sent Dawn a note saying, sorry, I was going to be out of town. And I knew they would put on a good show from what I've heard. So um, I want to say thank you to those guys. And of course, Todd, congratulations. Um, uh, just keep your comments short over there. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we'll be okay. We're, we're, we're easy. Mm -hmm. So, but other than that, thank you very much. And Mr. Dryden, welcome back. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, I just have a thing or two. Um, is Joanne still here? I think so. She's still here? Yes, she left. Okay. Um, I, I do want to thank the administration, particularly Joanne and Tony and others that, that were involved in providing security and an environment for the students um, who were participating in what we call a walkout, which wasn't at all a walkout. Um, and so, this is where things get a little touchy. I, I, from, you know, a social studies teacher for 23 years who um, participated in more than one act of civil disobedience in my lifetime, and uh, God help me, um, had students also participate with me in anti-war demonstrations, et cetera. Um, I do, I do understand that the community is rather split on whether or not the administration should have sanctioned this, should not have sanctioned this, but I do want to make the point about civil disobedience and taking one's hit at the end of that. And the point that I want to make is this. Um, I believe that students can be political actors and are, and I do not believe that everyone involved in such an event is just there on a lark, skipping class, etc., like some people would like to say. I do also believe that there's nothing wrong with the administration withholding its sanction from those activities. There is nothing wrong with students as political actors taking their lumps, so to speak, at the end of that process. I personally would rather have 15 dedicated students willing to be punished for their political action as opposed to 400 students who can be portrayed as cutting class. I think it's better for them. It's better for everyone. That's not to say that I don't appreciate how this administration handled this very delicate thing. Going forward, Maybe we think about it a little differently. Thanks, John. Anyone else? Yeah. We'll go down the line, I guess. Um, mine is a little different, but it's still about the students. Uh, over the past month, I've had the opportunity to attend several track meets of high school, which I've never done before. Uh, Rock the Runway, again, which is just an amazing thing. Hear these musicians play. I do that as often as I can. So you get all these, this town gives its community members an excellent opportunity to see these children. And then we end it tonight with these wonderful student ambassadors. Uh, there's a reason. I mean, we're doing something right here. Uh, these kids are amazing, but I don't think they're doing it all on their own. So thanks to everyone who makes that happen. And I just love watching these kids do stuff. And, I'm gonna be a little bummed one day when I might not live in this town to see these kids do that kind of stuff. But it will set a very high expectation for the next place I land. Thanks. Awesome, thanks Bob. I think they stole a lot of my thunder as far as saying that I'm just really impressed with the kids that we have in this district and the teachers that lead them. Um, from the emotion of the music kids and their teachers, to the single student who was brave enough to come up and speak to us, um, kind of against what everybody else was saying, and our student ambassadors, I am just overwhelmed at how impressed I am with our kids. Um, and I think, like Bob said, I think everybody is doing a phenomenal job. Um, and then I just wanted to clarify a little bit about Mr. Wall's statements directed directly to me. Um, as some of you may know, I had talked about having possibly organizing a town hall. 
Um, I did get a, we did get a group of city leaders that have met on several occasions. Um, and the direction that we've decided to go is more of um, an empowering citizens direction um, where we hope to reach out to the community and find out what it is that they are concerned about regarding safety and if it is something that we already provide as a community that we will educate them on that and if it's something that we don't provide hopefully we will find leaders in the community who are willing to spearhead those changes um, so it is something that's moving it's moving slowly because we want to do it correctly and it is something that i am doing on my own but not as a board member but i just wanted to clarify because that came up okay. Um, I just wanted to thank the student ambassadors for their comments and speaking about their experiences. But I especially wanted to thank um, Dan, the student who spoke. Um, it's always difficult to come before the board and give your comment, especially as a parent. Teachers I know come and speak, and I've always, you know, parents have always told me how nervous they were about speaking or teachers even they're nervous or something like that so as a student to come on his own I really applaud him and just kudos to him for coming and speaking his mind so and it's great to hear from students anyway so mm -hmm. I appreciate it so, so family to me on this we have amazing students in this district well, and I am feeling better I spent, reason why the seven of us I spent my there. entire day today going over about 40 scholarship applications for BP. So I can tell you we have amazing, amazing students, students in this district. So, yeah. All right, we do have closed session on the agenda, although there is no action to follow. Um, so I am going to entertain a motion to adjourn the closed session to discuss security procedures and the use of personnel and equipment to respond to an actual, a threatened, or a reasonably potential danger to the safety of employees, students, staff, the public, or public property. So moved. Second. Moved by Dryden, second by Loud. Can you please call the roll? Dave Mark. Yes. Dremel. Yes. Dryden. Aye. Yes, Mark. Yes. 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 Yes.